Good morning. I'll keep this quick so we can have as much time as possible to hear from all of you. Uh, the, of course, I think the uh, intention was to have a somewhat inflammatory conversation about whether deep neural networks are as awesome as popular media implies that they are and can solve everything, or whether that's not the case. Uh, <clears throat> if you happen to agree that that's, they're not enough, uh, be thinking about what you'd fill the gap with. Um, I'm not going to take that opportunity right now, but I am going to elucidate what I see as the gap. So we have what deep learning can do, and this is the subject of some debate to trying to define it, but I would sum it up with a broad brush to say that it finds patterns, specifically in the terms of weighted combination of the, uh, inputs. If you look at most of the talks just from uh, this morning and yesterday, um, a lot of the conversation started at the symbolic level, going from raw pixels and microphones and touch sensors to symbols is a huge gap that needs to be crossed in some way. And the question is whether deep learning can do that. Now, um, deep learning can do some generalization, um, especially uh, convolutional neural networks. We'll talk about that in a second. And with some add-ons, another layer or two at the end, you can do classification, assign things to categories. You can do regression assign something a numerical value. You can do clustering using these features that you've built to then determine what's similar to what else. And you can also choose some actions. Deep learning is cool. You can take raw images, expose it to a bunch of faces, and learn features that, when reconstituted, look like faces. You can expose it to a bunch of cars and learn features that look like cars. So this idea of going from raw pixels to symbols starts to look plausible. Um, you can do the same thing with color imagery. You can get some really funky spiders and teapots and rocking chairs just from raw exposure to data. You can take raw audio soundtracks, break them up into their component frequencies, do run deep learning on them, find features, and then based on that, group the authors. And you can learn, if you didn't know it already, that Weezer and Modest Mouse are similar some ways to the presidents of the United States of America. And that Kelly Clarkson and Beyonce are not too far away from Taylor Swift and Avril Lavigne. You can also, as has been mentioned, I'm a huge fan of this work, uh, DeepMind use deep Q networks to learn to play Atari very well, past time of mine. And, um, you can also do crazy things like having a robot watch YouTube videos and with a couple of deep learning networks, learn the objects in the videos, learn types of gra grasps, and then with some other mechanisms, apply those to learn how to cook. So we have one edge of our gap. The other edge of our gap, what is necessary for AGI? So that for the purposes of this conversation, there's a lot of debate there, as has been mentioned. But I'd like to focus on things that are externally observable. I don't want to touch internal representation because we have a huge lack of consensus on that, or on internal processes, or on affect. But what can the thing do? And I'd like to use human performance as a threshold. This is the human level AI multi-conference. So let's revise that question to be, can deep learning do everything that a human can do? Or Alternatively, what can humans do that deep neural networks cannot do? So I just want to throw out a few concrete observations as a grist for the conversation. Um, in the category of action, switching contexts and making plans are something where deep neural networks do not do well yet. In the category of perception, generalization and adaptation are also sorely lacking. So to briefly drill down on each of those, what I mean by switching contexts is that existing approaches map one set of inputs to one action. Humans don't appear to rely on that. So an example, a self-driving car trained in the US, you take it to the UK, and it will probably take more than a five minute lesson to get it to do the right thing. Planning. So if you look at how 
DeepMind's algorithm did on the Atari games. There is a pattern. The ones where the action was always determined by the current state of the screen, it blew humans out of the water every time. The ones where you had to take a series of actions, I think Montezuma's Revenge was one of those, um, it did poorly. Um, there are ways around this. I'm not aware of any general ways around this yet that involve deep neural networks. So this is something that uh, still does not happen well. <clears throat> so there have been huge successes in chess and Go that do require planning. Those parts were not done with deep neural networks. They were done with traditional tree searches. Generalization. So this is one of my favorite ones. Um, <clears throat> deep neural networks, if you look at the evidence, were designed to identify cats in YouTube videos. Um, the generalization that happens is very good at taking an array of pixels and finding one pattern and locating it no matter where it is in the image. As long as your data has two-dimensional structure or three-dimensional structure, um, you can have translational invariance, translational generalization. Um, what it does not do is find things that look different in their raw pixel format or that are similar in some other way. Um, and it doesn't work well if you have data that doesn't have a two-dimensional structure. And um, if you think about it, this is actually a very narrow, uh, carefully defined set of problems. We have been very careful to look where the light is in our implementation of these. If you were to have something like, say, uh, David Hansen's humanoid robot, that has cameras and range sensors and microphones and a bunch of other inputs coming in, you can't take all of that and put it in a nice two-dimensional array that is meaningful, meaning that two inputs that are next to each other are similar and two inputs that are far apart are not related. So convolutional neural networks don't work out of the box. Um, so the generalization that deep neural networks do right now is very limited. And finally, adaptation. So um, as was mentioned earlier this morning, I was nodding vigorously as Gary Marcus was talking. Um, it would be great to not only have machine learning benchmarks, AI benchmarks, where you have to learn to do a task, but where you have to learn to do a set of tasks, even better. Better yet, where you have to learn to do a set of tasks and then you're tested on a completely novel task or in a world that changes in some fundamental way during the course of the task. So for instance, measure um, how well does it learn to play chess after the same number of games that a human is exposed to. So both a computer and a human play 10 games of chess, and then they play each other. Who wins? Um, being able to uh, quantify that, uh, I think, would come up with a huge gap, and it's part of this gap here. So I leave a big question mark hanging in the air. What do we need to fill that gap? And I'm going to leave it hanging. Thanks for your attention.